Hello everyone, welcome to another NP Academy lecture. Today we will talk about outpatient treatment of COVID-19 using monoclonal antibody. So we will talk about COVID-19 treatment with monoclonal antibody. Basically, FDA has given emergency use authorization to two different monoclonal antibody treatments for COVID-19 patient who had mild to moderate symptoms and who met certain criteria. These monoclonal antibodies are, the first one is something called BAM Linivimab, Linivimab. As you can hear, the name is a little complicated to pronounce. So, for the sake of simplicity, in this discussion, we will call this one as a BMAB. And this antibody was developed by a farm company called Eli Lilly here in the United States. The other company, the, sorry, the other uh, antibody, those are the combination of two different monoclonal antibodies and one of them is called Casirivimab, Casirivimab, so we will call this as a CMAB and plus MDVimab, MDVimab. We will call this as an IMAB and this two antibody was developed by another company called Regeneron pharmaceutical company. These drugs are still under clinical trial and some of the early result that is coming out is very very encouraging. As a matter of fact, the BMAB data was recently published in the Journal of New England Journal of Medicine, New England Journal of Medicine in October 2020 and there they have published the BMAB data. What they did is in this clinical trial that they chose patients who had positive COVID-19 and they all had their symptoms were symptoms were mild to moderate. So, they were not very sick and they all were not hospitalized. So, they were not hospitalized. Hospitalized. And the treatment was they were given only one time treatment was just one time treatment one time treatment uh, with BMAB monoclonal antibodies and then these patients were monitored for 29 days and they were monitored for 29 days and they were uh, monitoring for they were monitored for worsening of COVID-19 symptoms. Now uh, one way they measure the worsening of symptoms is they were looking for look for the rate of hospitalization hospitalization in the first 29 days after they were treated with BMAP monoclonal antibodies and here's what they found they divided first of all they divided this patient in two group so the one group who received the BMAP monoclonal antibody so we'll call it BMAP positive group and the other one who did not receive the BMAP monoclonal antibodies, though there's kind of your placebo group, so we'll call it uh, BMAP negative. So BMAP negative group. And they were looking for the rate of hospitalization. Hospitalization. And what they found is that in the BMAP positive group in the first 29 days, the rate of hospitalization were 1.6 percent while 
in the BMAB negative group, the group who did not receive the uh, BMAB monoclonal antibodies, the hospitalization rate were 6.3 percent. So, as you can see, there is a decrease in hospitalization among the group who received BMAB monoclonal antibodies in first 29 days. When they break down these data among high risk patients, they looked at the high risk patients and those high risk patients were the one either they were obese, so their BMI were more than 35 or maybe they were older, so the age were more than 65. In this group, when they look for the rate of hospitalization, the difference is even better. So, in the BMAB positive group, B MAB positive group, the hospitalization among high risk patients were 4 percent. On the other hand, on the BMAB negative group, the hospitalization were 15 percent. So, as you can see, there is a 11 percent decrease in hospitalization among high risk patient who received the BMAB antibody treatment only one time. Some of the other thing they found in the BMAB positive group in this study, BMAB positive group, the severity were less in this group. So, they have a less severe symptoms and they have a faster recovery faster recovery. In many cases, they start to felt better as early as the second day of treatment. So, if they have a COVID-19, you give them BMAB antibody right at next day, they started to feel much better. And the similar results were found in the CMAB and IMAB study also. Though these data has not been published yet, but Regenron did share those data to FDA. So, the based on these findings, FDA has given these recommendations to use these drug for COVID-19 treatment. So, here are the recommendations. Uh, the minimum age for this treatment and for this drug to be used, the minimum age requirement is 12 years and the minimum body weight requirement for this uh, drug to be used is 40 kilogram. So, basically, this drug can be given to peds who is older than 12 years of age as well as the adult. So, let us divide this uh, criteria among adult and the peds. So, among adults, let us talk about in adults. In adults, that is like you know older than 18 years of age. So, what they said is that this, uh, this BMAB monoclonal antibody, this BMAB antibody can be given to anyone who has history of diabetes. So, anyone who has diabetes can be treated with this BMAB antibody if they have a positive COVID-19 or anyone who has chronic kidney disease, chronic kidney disease regardless of the age or any adult who are obese. So, there is a BMI is more than 45 or anyone who just older the age is more than 65. So, even if you do not have diabetes or CKD, you are just a 65 year or older, you are eligible for this treatment or if you are older than 55, so age is equivalent or older than 55 plus if you have hypertension. Hyper tension or you have any cardiovascular disease CVD or if you have a history of COPD. Any of these patients, if you got the COVID-19, it's a good idea to treat them uh, with BMAB or the combination of CMAB or IMAB monoclonal antibodies. So, this is among adults. So, let's look at the PEDS patients. Among PEDS and we are talking about anyone who is 12 to 17 year of age. 
in this category any piece you can get the this treatment if their BMI BMI is equivalent or more than 85 percentile or if they have a history of sickle cell disease or if they have a some neurological disorder neurological disorder like they have a cerebral palsy cerebral palsy or if you have a, you are on the daily medication on on the any lung disease like asthma if you have a asthma plus you take daily medication to manage your asthma so just if you have a asthma that's not enough if you have if you take medicine every day to manage your asthma daily then you are eligible uh, for this drug or if you have uh, any kind of heart disease whether it's acquired or it's congenital or if you are dependent on any kind of instruments if you have instrument dependent like if you use the uh, CPAP for example or BiPAP or for example you use this you have a track like a stomach tube like track any of like these so any of these patients who get the COVID-19 are eligible so with this criteria along you have to have a, a positive COVID-19 test so have a positive test and when do you give them when do you give them this medicine when the sooner the better sooner the better but the first within the first 10 days within within first 10 days of onset of symptoms if the symptoms are past 10 days then then you're not eligible for onset of symptoms so first 10 days okay well what are the dose for this medicine the dosing uh, for BMAP, the dosing for BMAP, what are the dose? Let's look at the dose. Dose. For BMAP, BMAP, the dosing is 700 milligram IV one time only. One time only. It's given over the course of one hour. And then patient need to be observed, patient need to be observed for another, observed for another one hour. Basically, you're looking for any anaphylactic reaction or any allergic reaction. For the CMAB or IMAB, which is a combination of two drugs, we did, so you have a CMAB and IMAB, and both are given in one bag. So each is 1200 milligram that you mixed in one bag and given again IV on one hour over uh, one hour only one time one time and the patient again need to be observed for another one hour so the dose is fixed for the BMAP 700 milligram for the CMAP and IMAP 1200 milligram, anyone who is older than 12 years of age. So you don't have to manage uh, as just the dose based on the age or the weight. If you are 12 years or older, weigh minimum 40 kilogram, the single dose. As you can see, these are the IV treatments. So not everybody, not everyone can give this medication. The place has to have a transfusion facility and also and they can be able to observe and manage any anaphylactic reactions if, if it happens. So this is the treatment um, now for these monoclonal antibodies in the patient who has the COVID-19 and meet those criteria. Okay, well how these medicines work, how this uh, monoclonal antibody work. So as you probably know, this coronavirus, if you look at the virus, they have this uh, a spike protein so they have this a spike protein and this is spike protein and if say for example this is your human body 
this is your human cell human cell this human cell has a receptor and the name of this receptor is something called they have a lot of this something called ACE2 receptor and so this is ACE it stands for angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor. So this uh, um, this uh, coronavirus actually binds to this uh, uh, S2 receptor uh, when they bind it, it is like this so they comes here and this uh, this virus binds to this S2 receptor and then this virus gets internalized comes inside the human cells so this is your virus and when they come inside the human cell this causes the infection so this leads to the infection if you treat the patient with monoclonal antibodies so in the case of b man for example if you treat them that means you have a, a lot of b man uh, monoclonal antibodies floating around when you get this virus infection this virus infection who have this uh, spike protein sorry let's keep the uh, spike protein this these monoclonal antibodies are made against this spike protein so this monoclonal antibody it goes and binds to this uh, spike protein and now this spike protein is not available to bind to the ACE receptor. So now this cannot bind to the ACE receptor. So then virus cannot, this virus cannot comes inside the cell. And so you don't have any infections. You have no infection. So, so that's how it works because these, uh, these antibodies are generated against the spike protein. It's very simple, isn't it? Well, so what are some of the contraindications? Who are the patient that should not be getting this treatment? So not recommended for who? Not recommended. So this, these monoclonal antibody treatments, these are not recommended for anyone who are hospitalized, who are hospitalized for COVID-19. So it's not good for the hospitalized patients. It's not good anybody who is requiring oxygen. So who are on oxygen. Or if someone has uh, already on the oxygen, they are on the baseline, but they are increased in the baseline, increase in the baseline of oxygen need baseline O2 need so for example if you have a COPD and you take you use 2 liter oxygen all the time and now you got the COVID-19 and now you are using 4 liter oxygen after the COVID-19 these patient should not be treated with these monoclonal antibodies because these treatment can make things worse. I have posted another video on the treatment of COVID-19 with steroid, specifically dexamethasone. The dexamethasone tend to help to the patient who is requiring oxygen or who are intubated because of COVID-19. I encourage you guys to check out that video. So here you have it. These monoclonal antibodies uh, one is called BMAB, another one is the combination of CMAB or IMAB. If it's given early in the symptom, early in the disease process to a COVID-19 patient who met certain criteria, either they are older than 65 years of age or if they have a diabetes or kidney disease or uh, they are obese or the peds who are like again obese or have some uh, sickle cell disease or asthma, daily medication. If these patients given uh, get the COVID-19 then it's a good idea to give them this one-time treatment of uh, BMAP or the combination of CMAP or IMAP 
within the first 10 days of onset of symptom as these treatment decreases the hospitalization it also uh, decreases the severity of symptoms and uh, increase the recovery time you start to feel better as early as two days so this is it for today i hope you'll find it useful thank you very much and i will see you next time